One of the most common things I hear is that vegan cooking is difficult because it requires so much prep. Now, it is true that some vegan recipes do have a lot of ingredients, especially because you might be trying to take advantage of so much delicious flavor and add more nutrition to the dish, but it is not true that all this prep has to be difficult. So in this video, I'm gonna share with you the 10 tools that I use in my kitchen to make vegan cooking easier, more sustainable, and more fun. So where should we start? Maybe we should start with my favorite thing, the Instant Pot. Hello, Instant Pot. Oh, it's so heavy. You guys, if you've been watching my channel, you already know how much I love the Instant Pot. This invention, I mean, the man who invented it was a genius. It is so useful in the kitchen. You can do so many things in the Instant Pot, and especially if you are a busy mom, busy family, busy dad, busy anybody, the Instant Pot definitely deserves a place in your kitchen. You can saute in it, you can pressure cook, you can make soups in here, stews, you can make yogurt, you can make your own tempeh. It's the best tool for making your own beans at home. You don't even need to soak your beans when you use the Instant Pot. I also love my Instant Pot for making brown rice. It makes the best rice without a rice cooker. And my oatmeal in the morning, it's also super important for me to have an Instant Pot so I can make one of my favorite breakfasts Teff porridge. The Instant Pot is all around an amazing machine. It comes in different sizes and these sizes come in different prices. So you can spend as little as $80 or sometimes less on an Instant Pot and even up to $150 if you wanna get the big boy Instant Pot. However, mine is the eight quart and it is around $120. A tip for saving money on the Instant Pot and other small kitchen appliances is to buy them refurbished on Amazon or another website. When you get to the page on Amazon, look to the right where the price is and the shipping options. Right below that main price, there will often be another price for an open box item. It'll tell you the condition that it is in, often brand new, like new, and you can get it at a significant discount. Keep in mind that when a small appliance is resold, the actual cooking mechanism that you put your food in is brand new. It's the mechanical parts that have been refurbished, but you still saved money. The two most essential kitchen tools that you need are a good knife. This is an eight inch chef's knife that is sharp. Make sure it's sharp and a good wooden cutting board. This one is just a basic Aisha Curry cutting board. I think it's from Target. It's really solid. It's inexpensive. I love it. Buy these two things before you buy anything else. A chef's knife is important because this is the main knife you will use for all of your chopping, mincing, dicing. The reason I recommend that it is a good and sharp chef's knife is Dull knives hurt people. Dull knives are dangerous. Dull knives have a tendency to slip, especially when you are cutting harder items, but even when you're cutting an onion. A dull knife can slip, and there go your two fingers. I mean, well. <laughs> Do you have only two fingers? <laughs> oh my God, okay. A dull, oh God. Mm -mm -mm. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Ooh, okay, one more, let me go back. Even when you're chopping an onion, a dull knife can slip and there go your fingers. We don't want that to happen. So make sure your knife stays sharp. Even a good quality chef's knife, however, needs to be sharpened on a regular basis. To do this, you can simply take your knife to a knife sharpener in the farmer's market. We have those here in Atlanta, or I go to my local Cook's Warehouse, which is like a Sir La Table, Williams Sonoma type store. They have kitchen products and they will sharpen your knife there. You can also buy products for the home where you can sharpen your own knives, but I don't trust myself to do a very good job with that. So I just simply pay somebody else to do it. It usually costs a dollar per inch of your knife. This is the main knife I use. However, I also recommend having a simple paring knife and a bread knife. The eight inch knife is good because you can, it's just, it's, this is the basic. This is like just regular, the perfect size, the perfect size handle, perfect size blade, all that good stuff. 
A paring knife is good when you need to cut something small and kind of intricate. The reason for a bread knife is obvious, to cut bread. But did you also know a bread knife is the best thing to use to cut tomatoes and also watermelon and other melons, who knew? I like a wooden cutting board because a few things. For one, the knife will not slip easily on a wooden cutting board. Plastic cutting boards are good too, as long as they don't have a smooth surface, but those shiny plastic cutting boards, I don't know what those are all about. I've also seen stone cutting boards, like a cheese board thing that people actually cut on. I don't know what that's all about. I don't recommend that. Just get you a basic wooden cutting board. You don't need a bunch. I recommend just having two. You can have more, but if you're just starting, you only need two. One for your vegetables, so onions and garlic don't stink up your fruit, and another for your fruit. But what if you don't feel like doing all that chopping? I get it, I don't wanna do that chopping either. Half the time, I use my food processor, which I will demonstrate in a bit, but did you know there ain't no shame in using a food chopper like this one? You'll get the perfect little dices depending on the size of the blade that you use. And shall I demonstrate? Let me do that. So basically, all you have to do is, let's say you're cutting an onion. You gotta cut the top and the bottom off of your onion and cut the onion in half. Place it down in your chopper and voila, now you have perfectly diced, minced, chopped, whatever size you want, pieces of onion. You can do the same thing with all sorts of vegetables. This handy dandy device comes with other attachments to chop all of your veggies. So you don't have to be the best at knife skills to have perfectly chopped onions and other vegetables. I also love my food processor for helping me prep ingredients, especially onions, garlic, pretty much anything that needs chopping, mincing. I also like the food processors to make hummus, to make raw desserts. The food processor is great pesto. So let me get my two food processors. I've got two different sizes and I'm gonna explain why. So here we have my newest addition. This is the KitchenAid Go cordless food processor or food chopper. It's a lot smaller, meaning you cannot fill it as much. So I have my larger food processor as well when I'm making something like hummus or a lot of anything. This thing is great because it is cordless. Another thing about this cordless feature is that the batteries are interchangeable. The KitchenAid Go line comes with a bunch of different small appliances. I'm gonna share with you another one later, but the battery is interchangeable between all of their appliances. And even though it is battery operated, it is just as powerful as the one that you plug into the wall, but you're not gonna have a cord in your way to knock over everything in the kitchen, which happens to me from time to time. Well, it used to before I had this guy. You don't need two food processors. This is my job, so I need two food processors. But if you are gonna buy a food processor, buy this one, the big one, because yes, it is very big, but if you're doing something small, you need a smaller um, food processor like this, there's an attachment that you can put on the top to make it so that you have a smaller bowl. You don't have to use so much surface area of your food processor. This is the Cuisinart 13 cup food processor. I have had this machine now for about two years. However, before that, I had another Cuisinart food processor. The reason I don't have it anymore is not because it's broken, but they came out with a new model uh, and it's just better looking. This newer model is better. You know, I'm using it on camera, but that old one, oh my gosh, I've had it for, I've probably had it for 12 years. And guess what? My ex-husband has it now and he still uses it. Cuisinart products last a lifetime, just like the KitchenAid. They also come with warranties. So if you have any issue, you know that it will be replaced or fixed. That is essential for something that you're spending a lot of money on. But if you have a small space, you might want something smaller like the KitchenAid Go Food Processor. If it were up to me and I had a ton of space, I would start with this one, but I do love you as well. You're perfect. One product that doesn't get enough hype is the Immersion Blender. Mm. 
I love the way that sounds. Immersion blenders are amazing. You can use these to puree soups. So let's say you're making my sweet potato bisque. Recipe is on the blog. I will link it down below. Let's say you're making that sweet potato bisque. It is time to make it a bisque and puree it. Instead of transferring that hot soup to a tall blender and potentially burning your arms off, you can use an immersion blender. It is immersed into the soup and you just turn it on. Blend, blend, blend. So easy. Now this is another one of the KitchenAid Go products. So that means that battery comes off and you can you know, use it with all the appliances. I also have this cordless immersion blender. It's also by KitchenAid. I'm gonna link them both though. They're both awesome, no complaints. Another thing about an immersion blender is you can use this to make a smoothie. You can also use it to make sauces. So you would put all your ingredients into the smaller cup and bloop, blend up anything. It is great. And the blade, it is small, but it is powerful. Here we have a Dutch oven. This is a heavy enameled cast iron pot you can use it for squats to add a little bit of weight to your squats, of course, or you can use it for cooking, which I usually use it for cooking. But I love this for making my stews, my soups. You can use it to make bread, which I don't do, but you could do. Because it is a heavy enameled cast iron, that means that it distributes heat very evenly. I also love that you can use Dutch ovens in the oven. So if you're making a nice stew that requires going in the oven, or let's say you're making like a nice bake or a filling for Thanksgiving, you can put it in here and you can put it in the oven. Oh, I gotta put it back down. Maybe that just means I need to do more upper body exercises. I don't know, but as you see, it's really pretty. It's got this white enamel in the inside. Now here's the thing. These tend to be very expensive. A Le Creuset could cost upwards of $400. This one is Berghoff brand, which I got at Saks Off Fifth, but you don't have to spend all that money. You can buy less expensive cast iron enamel Dutch ovens on Amazon. I like Lodge brands. My old one was from Lodge, but Another little trick that I use to buy all of my pots and pans is to just go to Home Goods. Home Goods has the best selection of affordable, high quality, name brand, um, usually expensive cookware. So I, for example, recently got my grandmother a really nice, I don't remember how many quarts it was, but you know, good sized Dutch oven. The one that I have, same brand, I think it's a hundred and some dollars. I got it at Home Goods for $30. So don't sleep on Home Goods, y'all. If you need to buy all this stuff to furnish your kitchen, Home Goods is the place. I actually like going there more than Amazon because I can see it before I buy it. Now I'm gonna get my cast iron skillet. Shout out to everybody who keeps their cookware in their oven, like me. Y'all, this is my favorite cast iron skillet. It is heavy. It's almost as heavy as this guy. It is heavy. But here's the thing, this one is by Milo. It doesn't rust, it doesn't rust. Yes, you can still put it in the oven, you can still bake with it, you can do everything you would with it like a regular rusty old cast iron skillet, but this one will not rust. So I recommend if you're gonna buy a cast iron skillet, get this one. Sure, you can get the Lodge one, that could rust, I have that one, I use that one. But just to give yourself peace of mind, just buy this one. I don't remember off the top of my head how expensive it is, but we will link it, so don't worry. This is the one I recommend. And speaking of actual nonstick, a nonstick pan is so helpful, especially if you want to make pancakes, so you can make them in here, vegan omelet, though you could make it in here. But I don't know, this nonstick, like nonstick skillet, this one just will never stick. As long as you, you know, you grease it a little bit, you will never have an issue of it sticking. I do like to have two frying pans, so an actual nonstick and a cast iron is perfect, especially if you're gonna cook more than one thing at a time. But I use this for sauteing vegetables, I use it for making pancakes, for making my vegan omelet, for pretty much anything, but it's nonstick. Now, of course, when it comes to nonstick, you wanna make sure that you are buying non-toxic nonstick products. This one is from Caraway. Um, 
it's a little expensive, so I will link it so you can check it out. Also, go to Home Goods. Home Goods sells great nonstick pans as well. They have green pan, which is typically expensive, but if you get it at Home Goods, it is gonna be a great price. That's also non-toxic, non-stick. So if you're gonna buy three pans, I recommend these three. Ooh, one more. You should also have a small saucepan. Stainless steel is great. Any material is great, but I really like stainless steel because it's light and it'll last literally forever. That's gonna be great if you're steaming vegetables or if you're making oatmeal, you're making uh, hot chocolate, mulled wine, apple cider, whatever. Just small pot is great. Like I said, stainless steel is even better because it will last forever. It is essential to protect all of your pots and pans from scrapes, especially the ones like the enameled cast iron and nonstick, which are prone to scraping. And if you scrape the, the surface of it, the nonstick part, that's a problem. It's not gonna stick anymore. Even though these are non-toxic, I still don't want any of that in my food. So when you're cooking, use wooden spoons, not metal. Metal has its uses. It's okay to use on a cast iron skillet that is not covered in enamel. However, I typically only use my wooden spoons. I even have a wooden ladle. Plastic is also good, but plastic is plastic. Like, do we really wanna use plastic with our food that much? Also, another great option is silicone. However, with silicone, it has a funny taste and it holds flavor. Wood, you don't have to worry about any of that. I hope you found this video helpful and motivating. All these tools are gonna make your cooking so much easier. And if it's easier, you are more likely to stick with a healthy plant-based diet. Let me know what other tools I might have missed that you recommend. Just leave them in the comment section down below. If you want to find out where I bought all these products, you can find links down below as well. And there should be some pop-ups in this video that you can click through to purchase. I promise I would not recommend anything that I did not absolutely love. If you're looking for more delicious vegan recipes, make sure to subscribe here to my channel and turn on notifications so that you do not miss a single video. And you can find hundreds of vegan recipes on my blog, sweetpotatosoul.com, and also in my cookbook, Sweet Potato Soul. Tune in next week because I'm gonna share with you the real, real, the real, real, real on what I actually eat in a day. I'm not gonna be going out of my way to make something special. I'm not gonna make it pretty. I'm just gonna show you straight up what my daughter, Baby J, and I eat on a daily basis. So you can see that eating vegan is attainable even if you're super busy. I'm a busy single mom who is working full time and I still eat a healthy, balanced vegan diet. It doesn't need to be overly complicated. So tune in for that. I'm gonna show you how it's done. Thank you so much for being here with me, for subscribing to my channel, for turning on notifications, and for liking this video. I'll see you here next week. Bye.